Oh, hi, this is Cairo from Ice Chat. Welcome to Ice Chat Innovation, Change, and Entrepreneurship. Helping people get back on their feet is good economics. See you in three minutes. Right, thank you so much. Uh, welcome back. Thanks for staying on. My name is Cairo. I have uh, two special guests today. One from Hong Kong, Ivan Yong, angel investor, organizational psychologist, and also an author, and also a founder for Sharon. Sharon is our main topic today. He's from Singapore, Eric Tan. So let's take a look. What is Sharon? Yeah, I have, I have something for you to see. Let's take a look, Sharon, this is Sharon. So Sharon is based in Singapore. Um, let's take a look at this. Sharon is, the, you can Google Sharon.com. You know, they are about sharing economy. It's the digital infrastructure and solution for business. Uh, you can download their app on Google Play and also App Store. They are, they are the go-to place right now. Uh, if you have some idle inventory, entertaining service, beautiful venues uh, for rent and you can also earn from your assets, right? So other than just uh, C2C customer, their primary focus now is with B2B customers, right? So now let me bring them on board so that you'll be able to hear from them and see what's best. All right, can I have Ivan and Eric, please? Hello, guys. Hello. Hello, Hi, Kyle, welcome. Nice Hello. Hi. Nice to see Hi. you. All right. So, how are you, Ivan? Eric? Good, good. good. Uh, there's, there's no new infection in, in Hong Kong. Great. For almost a Fantastic. week already. So, it's, it's getting oh. better out here. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Malaysia has zero local infection. Only right. yesterday. So, we have another two weeks to prove ourselves. <laughs> what about Eric? What about you, Eric, Singapore, in Singapore? Singapore? I think most of the cases are with the foreign workers. So the community, mm. they're okay. Um, still single number, single digit. Yes. All right, all right. Good. So we are here today to talk about Sharon, right? And uh, in this uh, collaborative series, special one today, we have we call it Dare to Imagine, right? So mm. basically, Dare to Imagine is featuring some entrepreneurs, startups, they primarily will be working with uh, Naya Angels, uh, with Ivan Yong and his partner Sam Lee. I saw Sam just now. He went into the private group to see this live. Right. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much, Sam. All right. So let's start with um, 
Eric. So Eric, can you share with us a little bit? What is Sharon? So um, Sharon, we are B two B mobile platform that allows people to rent products, service, and value. Initially, when we started, we started as a consumer platform that provides uh, consumer facing products for people to rent. And right now, as we hit with the COVID situation, we have moved mainly into industrial type of um, or COVID related items for rental, um, such as like disinfection terminals, temperature screeners, um, what else? Disinfection robots, and um, the recent one is mainly swabbing booths. Right. Okay. So maybe you can also share with us a little bit, uh, Ivan. I want to talk to Ivan now. Sure. So Ivan, I mean, why? What? What is Sharon to you, and uh, why did Nayang Angels uh, attracted to Sharon? I think uh, Sam actually met uh, Eric first in one of uh, startup show in Singapore. We met him, mm-hmm. and then uh, we then came. We went. Then we came down to Singapore for a conference, and we met Eric again at the conference hotel, at the lobby. Ah. And he was pitching to us about his idea of a sharing economy, like how can he has allowed a C to C platform for people to rent out unused assets, underutilized assets like your camera and all that, and then other people can rent it from him, so you can make money from it actually. Mm. So we spoke to him. Uh, we really like his attitude actually, and um, so we invested our first seed money with Eric, and uh, we also did some mentoring for him, help him out here and there. Uh, right. we, we, have been, we have been very proud of his success actually because uh, we, he came to us okay. with an idea on a piece of paper but we can see that he has done a lot of work behind it I mean he has he showed us a lot of passion but he also has done a lot of work he has he knows the business very well and uh, like what we always say we also want something that is passion led and passion led but how do you show us passion that's true action and uh, Eric was you know he epitomized all of that so we have uh, we started a relation for almost two years with him and we are very proud of what he has done actually Wow, I mean, you guys have been together for 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 two years now, right? Yeah. So, uh, what are some of the things that you observe, uh, particularly Sharon? Well, Sharon, from what I know, started as a C two C, customer to customer kind of business, right? And yep. there was an article you wrote recently uh, from Hong Kong about the pivot that they did. Yes. Maybe the two of you can share with the audience what is that all about. Uh, maybe I can briefly talk about the article that I wrote. So it's actually okay. written for the Financial Management Magazine that's read by the Association of International Chartered Public Accountants. It's a UK-US mm-hmm. based uh, professional association of, mm-hmm. I think they have about 670,000 members of CFOs, multinationals and all that. Mm-hmm. So we, they wanted a story about, they came to us and asked how is startup innovating during the COVID crisis and I thought of uh, Sharon, how he's doing it with his business model. And I mm-hmm. think he did it quite well actually. Mm. And uh, so all, what, we, what I did was, I, I'm just saying his experience in a more structured way and how he managed to do it. I think he will have the story for you how he managed to pivot during the COVID-19 crisis. Yeah, tell us more, Eric. So I think um, during this crisis, the stuff I think last year and, and we see uh, many news coming in, so and so far, travel starts to get banned and many countries are stopping and closing their borders. So we were thinking, okay, what, what should we do? And, and people are stopped, uh, like our orders for renting travel equipment, our orders for tra- um, other type of leisure hobby starts to decline. And um, we, we do move, actually have event clients as well. And our um, business clients actually start postponing their events. We see lesser and lesser orders uh, during that period as uh, things start to fire up. And mm. from there, we have decided to actually move into uh, B2B. Uh, because at this point of time, our clients, our customers a- actually has issue with hygiene. So for example, I were to rent a GoPro, there, there might be uh, some hygiene issues. That I might, people are worried that, that you know, uh, if I rent this item, will it be um, very much uh, clean or is it um, safe to use? So we have that kind of challenge when, when uh, it happened during COVID mm. and we moved into B2B. So we, we felt that um, since there are no events, there are no people traveling, there's no people going out for their travel and circuit mm. breaker comes in, mm. there's a lot more on the COVID side that people start to rent um, various COVID related items. And it, it makes perfect sense for um, the businesses to actually uh, rent these items rather than purchasing them for these short term use. 
Okay, great. No, I like that thought. I want to build a little bit on for the audience, uh, Eric. Uh, what are some of the items that uh, the customers of Sharon been mm. renting or exchange with each other? Okay, I think um, a lot of items we we rent out are mainly travel equipment, diving equipment. Uh, we have event related items. Uh, mm. What else? Let's see. Costumes for parties, um, mascots. Some people were to book uh, an MC for just for their birthday parties, or maybe certain. How should I put it? The the inflatables that that allow uh, their mini kids party to have some fun, so on and so forth. So these are yeah. the usual popular items uh, when we are doing our C to C model. And uh, as we move into B to B, I think more and more people are looking at uh, event related items, and also mm. followed by. Uh, as we hit through the crisis, the few most popular items are like temperature screening devices, disinfection uh, services, uh, disinfection robot, anything that deal with automobiles. Because um, right now, the world is moving into something that is less human contact. So they require um, this kind of um, either services or, or products that could help them have these contactless services. Right. Okay. So talking about, um, I want to talk to uh, Ivan, right? Right. So yeah. Ivan, as as an uh, angel investor, right? I mean, mm. what what makes you pick Sharon, and how do you see Sharon uh, growing from the day you start until today? I, I think one thing I must add that uh, Eric, you might correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Eric doesn't have a degree. What was? Uh, mm-hmm. Do you have a diploma or, or something like oh. that? No. So he doesn't. He doesn't have a diploma. He doesn't have a degree, and uh, that's that's what. So we, we when we when we invest in a startup, we really look into the person. What kind of a person and character he is. Mm. So like in a book that I've uh, written about, uh, you know, culture. One of the key about a person is uh, his culture. How 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 does he actually look into solving problem or actually bring his ideas into fruition? Number two is. Mm. What we when we talk about, you hear a lot of people telling us about I'm passionate about something. But we ask, have you done something? Have you sell your idea? And most of the time, they say no. So, what we want, when we mean about passion, we need it to be also passion led by action. We see some action going on before we, you know, we invest in the startup. I think the third thing very important for us is actually that, uh, you know, the belief he has a belief system that can that, that has that, that can mature over time. You see? So one of the key about it is, so for example, in a in a startup, when you're facing problem. You manage to solve the problem, and then that will be your new assumption, right? For instance, to get new clients, you're you're spending money on FB advertisement. It worked. So the second time it worked again, third time it worked again, and then that becomes your culture. Next time when you need new clients, all you, all you need to do is go to the FB advertising. Uh, advertising. Mm. But a good startup founder or even a leader in an innovative organization, he must always constantly check that whether this belief is still still correct or not. So today, if you just go on FB advertisement, you're spending money, but you need there might be too much noise out there. So a good startup founder would be able to continue to actually look into that, and right. the way to do that is he must be willing to be mentored. And I think Eric is, you know, he is he's just fantastic. I mean, like when we tell him something, we don't expect him to just go and do it. We expect him to think about it, uh, go and try it, and then come back and even let us know, know whether it works or it doesn't work, or you know how he's going to do it differently. And I think that kind of relation is very important for Indian investors like us, a mentor right. mentee relationship. Yeah, I want to bring Eric on screen. Yeah. Eric. Okay, uh, I would say that uh, as a startup founder, you must be willing to mentor. So mm-hmm. uh, um, Ivan also told me in his uh, I said I have with him in May. Uh, he speak highly of you, uh, Eric. But what exactly like? What is it like to be mentored by Ivan, and and his team from Nyang Angels? Tell us more. I, I think um, what is it? What does it feel like to be mentored? I think yeah. Number one. Um, a person being able to be mentored must be able to listen and absorb with an open mind. Um, mm. How does it feel like to, to be um, mentored by Ivan and Sam? I think uh, it's it's a very good learning experience because they are they are very like Ivan shared earlier. They are very open. They are able to say, okay, it's okay if it's fail because I have met people that say, okay, um, okay, I'll show you this way, and if it fails, it, it fails. It, it doesn't really, um, they don't really take into consideration that um, failure is part of success. And, and uh, what Ivan and Sam always have is always that open mind. 
uh, where they say, okay, it's okay if it fails and, and um, let's try it out, try another another solution, another route or, or whatnot. And ultimately, the, the, the mentorship itself has brought me into regular conversation, not only in terms of um, our startup, but also what is happening in our, our region and, and how could um, another idea could, could spin off another brand, how could we be more socially uh, engaged or how can we be uh, more into providing environmental solution not only through, through renting, what are the other solutions that we look into such as providing clean vehicles, um, electro electric vehicles to, to send this item rather than diesel mm. van that is sending the item. Right, okay. So I want to bring uh, Ivan. Ivan, I just want to ask you. So uh, as, a, as a mentor yourself, um, can I just ask how many startups that you have currently under your, your belt in Nyang Angels and uh, how does Sharon different than other startups that you have mentored? I think currently we have about more, no more than eight, I think, uh, yeah, mm. startups that we keep in contact with. Uh, and um, I personally also mentor at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So I'm an official mentor there for about eight years now. So I mentor mm. undergraduates. So with that, I have about 16 of them now over the years. So, mm. uh, so I mentor, you know, all in all, I probably mentor 20 to over 30 uh, millennials, I would say. Mm. Uh, I think one, one of the key difference about Eric is that um, most of my mentors, uh, mentees actually would be, uh, they would have a college degree. Uh, mm. They would probably also uh, more, they also have gone through a, an option whereby they can choose to work in a company. Of course, that option is now less less favorable but in those days they can choose to do a startup or do a you know to do a or to work in a company and uh, the discussion could be like should i do a startup or should i go and work for someone and most of the time i tell them go and work for someone first that's the thing i tell mm. them but eric has a more unique sense because he mm. has been doing his own business for a very long time and he's the guy, guy who is willing to take a bit and go on the ground and you know make things happen meet people meet as many as he needs to try to get as many opportunities as possible and i think that's great that we see uh, that I would like most of my mentees to experience as well. Like you know, you have multiple rejections, but that doesn't mean the end of the story. Mm -hmm. But then, but how do you come out of the rejection? I think those uh, Eric already has that. So what we bring into the conversation is more of like our experience in selling into the market, our experience mm -hmm. working with uh, you know uh, with corporates. I think those are the kind of experience that we bring to the table for Eric in in, in right. sense. Right. So for, for that reason, I want to also ask you, Ivan, um, how did the conversation happen if, if not, it's, if let's say someone you know, were to meet you or you spot uh, an entrepreneur with, with these promising mm. ideas and great, someone like Eric, how does the conversation happen and what would you expect in that kind of first, first meeting? Well, I, I think the first meeting, if they come to us with a pitch, uh, mm. one of the things that they, they will tell us what he's trying to do with his startup. I think right. the, the next question is probably I ask is like what have you done about your idea? Mm. So recently I had another conversation in another startup is say uh, asking what have you done about your idea? Say, oh but I need the money to go and make my prototype. But I think that that is not the right approach. Then I, and I told this uh, this this startup guy I say like look, even your process of making that prototype is a story that you can tell and you start selling that to people so that we know what you're trying to do, is it? So right. I, I think that's the key, you know. When when you come to us, you say you're passionate about something. You are, you are be you believe in something. We would like to see what you're doing about it. Mm, uh, I think that's that's, right. that's the key that we are, that we look for in all our startup founders or startup that we that we work with. Right, right, Eric. So in your from running your startup, Eric, I want to know from you, uh, how do you see the future of sharing economy? So what's coming in your opinion? Mm, I feel um, during this crisis. Um, what is shaping businesses is um, to move into a more asset-like model uh, where mm. they do not own too many assets to run their businesses or to have um, many uh, ownership of, of like heavy uh, assets or inventory or whatnot. And sharing economy will move a lot in the space where it will move a lot in, as I mentioned earlier, number one, the business aspect where business are asset-like. Number two is there will be more gig uh, coming out where there are people will uh, people will be actually hiring um, employees that are more part time or, or in a special expertise like a gig economy. I think these two are the rising ones. 
Um, number three, we will see more in terms of um, how um, the trust, as, as recently I, I, I participated a lot in the Singapore Standards Council, uh, a lot is about how trust as, as, as the, the standards for sharing economy could, could actually jow in all types of sharing, such as sharing of knowledge, earlier mentioned sharing of assets, sharing of service. Um, there's so much more to share. Anything is possible. But where we're moving a lot is really how people redefine ownership. Right, right. I think that's, uh, I totally agree with you on this. Uh, particularly on uh, it used to be uh, a vehicle sharing and then uh, you have uh, you know house, house this is will be going on renting property right now in good assets and digital asset uh, this is one wonderful and and also with this thing called circular economy will definitely spur the need and more also I think um, opportunities over there so talking about uh, startup and business uh corporate for example you uh, know from what i know corporate uh, they are a bit resistant to startup the procurement mm -hmm. are not ready to procure startup services so how do you deal with this and what are some uh, challenges that you uh, face and how do you overcome that mm, i think for um corporate you need to know the right people because the hierarchy is um very it's a it's a long hierarchy up and you just need to know the right person. And right. It, it, I, I disagree slightly or, or slightly in a neutral state where not all corporates um, are actually very skeptical about startup. Most of them actually have started um, picking up um, their own um, colleagues that are starting up. For example, uh, Prudential, they have their own innovation team. Uh, we have um, mm. Pantori as well looking to actually Put their manage, senior management together with startup to find a, a um, solution where their 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 corporate could actually change into a more startup innovative way. Yes, uh, corporates are slowly moving into the the startup space. Mm, all right. So how do you overcome that? Maybe, maybe uh, I add on to what Eric is saying. Please. Yeah. yeah. You want to add something, Ivan? Yeah. So just to just to add on to what Eric said, you know, like two mm -hmm. two years ago, you never have a title that says Chief Informa uh, Innovation Officer. But if you go right. on LinkedIn and Google today, you'll find a lot of people holding titles like Chief Innovation Officers or you know Innovation right. Directors. Those titles are coming up more recently yeah. because of the coronavirus. But it has started right. slowly uh, since yeah. last year. Yeah. 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 So so maybe you can share with me, Eric, and the audience here. What are uh, one story that uh, that demonstrate that you you are able to convince this corporate get buy from you from startup? Can you share with us? Mm, well, there's a lot of topics we ask. Let me think. Um, yeah. For example, we have uh, I cannot name too many corporate name because uh, it's quite okay. sensitive. So maybe okay. we have a corporate that previously um, never ever actually really look into a startup. But uh, or, or even engage the startup services. However, um, when they realize how interesting our model could be, and also yeah. uh, the variety of things that we have, um, it's actually something that um, they never thought about having. And and after multiple meetings, we we spoke to them. We say, okay, look, these are the things that we can cover for you. We are not only a platform, but we can mm. also actually you utilize our platform as a tool. But you actually work with us very closely in terms of uh, having that um, relationship where all big corporates always have the relationship between businesses. So we incorporate both the relationship and you not using the platform as a product, but mm. a tool that enhance our um, relationship with the business. So after mm. which they started working with us, they started actually um, utilizing our, our uh, app and also speaking to us saying oh eric i have this project i want to do this i want to do this can you get it done so previously they were just getting their own team or uh, to get another corporate that is recognized mm. but all the time they realized oh actually startup is not bad because they are very agile they know people right. they, it's constantly changing and and um yeah. what they what they shared with me that they love love most love most is right uh, the, the the fast pace uh, changes and, and, and also new fresh items. 
Mm. Then, 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 buy the, for rental because I always right. tell my clients, do you want to rent? You know, these are the right. catalog pairs so and so forth. Do you have right. something interesting that we can look into? So right. our clients give us ideas so and so forth. Right. I mean, Eric, I want to build on that. No? I think you are a very passionate from what I see uh, you. Um, how do you how do you uh, grow yourself? You know? Because what Ivan said just now, you didn't go through the normal path of education, right? But education is not simply about getting a degree, going to school. That's not necessary. Education is larger than that, right? So how do you educate yourself to be where you are today? <laughs> uh, that's a very interesting question. I... I hmm. I like to read reports. I like to read what is happening in the market to keep myself mm. updated. So I will get reports of the latest e-commerce trend. I'll get uh, market reports of where e-commerce is going, where social media is going, where sharing economy is going. So these reports actually uh, feed my information on the upcoming future. So they always say the most important asset that anybody could have is not uh, the product that you can sell, but it's also the information and how you use the information. So I feed myself with a lot of information for the future. Mm. Uh, aside from that, I read a lot. So I, I read uh, various books like Sun uh, Tzu Fa, about negotiation, about thought leadership, about mindset, so on and so forth, so that I could not learn only about the skill. For example, you go to school, you learn about a certain, uh, what you call it, uh, a major, a minor, you know, you, you get a business degree, you get an engineering degree, but I get how the world works. That's my mm. module. See? Right. I, you know, right. What, what's, your, what's your module? What's your major? I think my major is uh, how the world works. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's interesting. And how people are thinking, so and so forth. So that, right. that, keeps, me, that, that keeps me learning. Uh. Right. So I don't know. I just want to ask you this uh, special question. Do you plan? to have something formal like a degree in the future? Mm -hmm. I I think most entrepreneurs will want to because we, we still feel that um, certain technical information or a certain technical education is required. Mm. Like for example, I, I could learn more about how business um, finance, I, I could take a degree in financing, for example, mm. Mm. better financing or better um, accounting skills I, I will see myself pursuing a skill but mm -hmm. I will not uh, take into a time uh, education in a, in a, in right a okay I want to ask you a little bit uh, personal question are you okay with that Eric okay okay yeah <laughs> okay how does it feel when uh, Nayang Angel said okay we will invest in you how does it feel for you at the moment mm, I think it felt very um, it's like okay we, 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 we did it like like we really did it because at that point of time I think we were still in a very early stage like I would say we were still in paper and pen and we're like this is this this is this okay uh, let mm. me show you this okay I, I'm not sure where I'm going but I'm going to try this <laughs> I'm going to do this 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 we have already mm. done this so we, right. we, we when we receive our money I think it's, it's a lot of joy a lot of happiness but um, after um, excitement what founders always don't disclose it they always say oh I, I got invested I announced this so on so forth but they don't, they don't speak about the slight responsibility. I, I felt responsible because mm. this capital is in your responsibility and your disposal. How would you put the capital or resources to the best of its use? Mm. Right. Ivan, I want to ask you, Ivan. So you, you, you have this, you authored a book, Department of Startup, right? Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about that book and how does this help someone like Ivan a startup uh, blend together in corporates? Okay, uh, so basically the book is uh, this this book here. I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? No. You uh, can't no, see it. That's better. Yeah, yeah. that one can. All right. Yeah, so what happened is uh, the, the title of the book is called Department of Startup Why Every Fortune Financial Have One. Meaning you say is like imagine in your corporate today you have a department of startup instead instead of just a department of HR and basically we believe a lot in culture in a cultural change uh, how do you bring a startup culture into a corporate so for instance Eric just spoke about why corporate likes to work with, with them because there was this fast-paced new ideas and things like that and we believe a lot that it actually stems from the culture and we look at it in four levels number one is what you believe in your belief system 
So in the case of Sharon, actually Eric believes in a sharing economy because he believes that the world can be a much more better place if we stop spending money and just buy new things all the time. And he can save the world through this small little startup that he's doing. So the belief system is very important. I mentioned earlier about how this belief system must always constantly evolve with what's happening. So you see Eric, he will be constantly in touch with what's happening. So he always check his belief system. Is this still functioning or not? For example, Nokia, they used to be the top in mobile phones. But the culture didn't change when the, when the world changed. So they didn't keep checking whether if that thing that they believe in is still valid or not. So a leader in a corporate must always check whether if the belief system that they had or the culture that they had is still workable or not in today's environment. If not, mm. then they need to pivot as one. Right. In the book, we also look at three other things. Number one is the startup founder. Uh, one of the key I always talk about is the startup founder is, is, is this the idea for action lab passion. Like I always say, what have you been doing about it? What have you been doing about your idea? So some time ago, a startup came to us. Uh, they told us a, a personal story that when they were young, they always they needed counseling. So they needed, they're creating an app where they, you can freely share counselors and all that. Now, mm -hmm. which is good because he has a belief system, which is experience based, number two. But then we ask, we ask the startup founders what we've done about it. And they have not done much. They have been trying to get money to start a platform to connect counselors and people. So there isn't, there isn't enough work there yet. What we're expecting is that they should have talked to maybe like 50 counselors and see how can they be interesting to put down the platform. They should start writing about their stories. I think we are looking for something like that. The other one we also look at is what you as a follower should do in a startup, in a, in a, in a corporate, to, in, to enhance this innovation in culture in you. So if you're a follower, a lot of people doesn't know this guy called Craig Silverstein, which is actually the employee number one of Google, 001. Mm -hmm. So after the two founders, there's this employee 001. He's a Stanford guy, smart fella. Instead of choosing to work for a big company, he went and chose to work for uh, these two guys who say, I'm going to start a company called Google in their dorm. And that because he chose to trust first, you see. So a lot of the time mm -hmm. in the current situation that we have in a corporate is like, we have what we call, I like to call a, a business transaction, you see. For a certain amount of time I decide to spend at work, mm. uh, you're going to pay me back this remuneration. So the trust mm. is based on this master and slave kind of a thing. You pay me, then I do this. You don't pay mm -hmm. me more, I don't do more. So how can you have innovation if that kind of relation starts from that? Mm. So a, a, a corporate, you know, to have an innovation culture, they must also enable their followers to build this trust with them, you know, in, in the corporate. Mm. And then the last part we look at is what we call some of all constants. That means that how you as a company come together to create this culture. And number one is probably hired by culture. You need to hire people who believe in the same values as you. So like for Sharon, I mean, like he will probably, she initially had a co-founder that he brought on board. Uh, mm. And she believes in the same idea that she that, that, that Eric has, which is really to have this idea of sharing economy to save the world, you know, in a small little way through their small little application. And I think for a corporate, these are all the few things that they can learn uh, from, right. uh, from from actually just have an innovative culture. And right. of course, the last part for a corporate for a company is that like what Eric says, you must constantly be knowledgeable. Mm. So in a book, I talk about how the you know. Uh, how the actually before the Western world was known as the center of knowledge, it was the Islamic world, right? Where all the mathematicians right. and all that came from. But mm -hmm. how did the Western world change that? It was, uh, they, what, they, be, they started this renaissance whereby they believed that from now onwards, whatever we say must be evidence based. Mm -hmm. So if I want to say the world is round, I need to prove to you by going the world that the world is round. So mm -hmm. because of that mind shift, mind shift change, the Western world, what we learn today is all from the Western world, no longer from the, you know, from the Islamic world. We are, it used mm. to be from there, you see. Mm. So I think, I think this constant knowledge learning is very important for everybody, even in a, in a corporate. So in short, that's the model that we have for you know, corporate innovation by lessons learned from startup. Right. Thank you, Ivan. I think that's uh, a great explanation about the book. And, and as I, I put there just now, that I think Sharon benefited a lot from uh, information, uh, the knowledge shared in the book as a startup to blend in with the corporates, right? So I want to ask Eric, Eric, so talking mm. about uh, people, right? So how do you in Sharon uh, hire people, what kind of people you have? Tell us a little bit more. Mm, okay. Um, maybe we talk about hiring first. Um, mm. we, we, when we hire, we look for people that are looking to be a leader or uh, have the leadership in them. 
we don't look for followers we don't look for um in business terms what we call ships we don't look for ships we look for wolves um number two we, we look for people that can take failure um not only um to just saying oh a client reject me oh i feel terrible no we don't look for this kind of people so we look for people that have leadership we look for people that is able to nurture their failure to success number three we look for people that has greed people that is able to hold on when things are not well people that are able to persist uh, be persistent um, be determined so on and so forth these are the three main aspects that we look for um, people that are in our company usually have these three aspects and we very much um, are a team right now we, we are a very small team not not a super mega big team we are a very small team that has um, very good grit and everybody believes in the idea that's, that's also one point that I think I missed we, we hire people and we want people that are in our company believing in our idea and also believing not only in the idea but also as a whole corporate just like how Alibaba started everybody thought that Alibaba was just an idea and e-commerce so on and so forth and, and people do not understand how it works but the, the initial founding team actually believe in it understand it and, and fight all the way to where it is today right that's great. Uh, I like what you said that the employee must believe in the startup and the founders. I think that's a very important line uh, in your conversation. Ivan, we have a question from Ivan Wong. <laughs> right, yeah. Another Ivan. Yeah. So yeah. I put up on screen. Would you advise that how much cash should a startup has? I mean, both Eric and Ivan, you can give a share of your knowledge and experience in this, please. Well, I think the first. Okay, Eric, maybe you just go ahead. You, you go first, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, okay, I think for, for, for one thing, we are angel investors. So when we come in, we are not like the VCs. Number one is angel investors invest their own money. They don't invest other people's money. So a venture capital invests a company's money. So the way they behave is you know a bit different. I think Eric will be able to share that with you because he talks a lot of VCs as well. I think for us, what we want is, we always constantly get questions from the startup founders like, uh, uh, do I take salary as for instance right we will expect the founder to take salary but you must commensurate with the sales revenue that he's bringing in so the money we give uh, should allow the startup founder to start off with adequate enough time to go and build the sales revenue the sales that he has to bring it in I think what, what we're looking for is the right balance between that and how do you bring in the sales now then we also meet a lot of startups come to us and say look we need your money to build the platform now, that's one of the key that we, 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 we try to avoid. Yes, you, we agree that you need to build the platform, but meantime, you need to start looking at how you can build the revenue around your story. So like, for example, when Sharon started, they don't have an app yet, but he already, we already, after based on our discussion, he began to look for business using an Excel sheet. How do he actually, he started using an Excel sheet, Eric, to actually make renting happen, you see, before he even have the app. And that's what we're looking for, is it's not, I, be, I believe that a lot of people out there are doing a lot of startup, but rarely, rarely two people are doing entrepreneurship. And uh, what we want is... Wait, it's how yeah. you do it, sorry. It's, it's yeah. really how you get it done in any other ways compared to the way that you think that is the only way. Yeah. Yes, yes. So like Eric, he started renting with an Excel sheet, but now he has an app that helps you track your rental when it's going to be over. Is your rental, uh, your rental tr inventory, you know, all that can be done with the app. That's why it's easy for him to pivot from a consumer to actually a B2B business. But that app wasn't existent. Eric was the one using Excel sheet. <laughs> Eric was the one. <laughs> yeah, you know. And, and I, I think right. the money is to look for the right balance, to allow the startup mm. to start, but then we want him to get revenue in. Otherwise, it's meaningless for us, especially into investors. We'll be just burning money. Yeah. Right, right. So in terms of... Uh, um, to start, right, cash. I think I want to get direct to the point here. In in Hong Kong dollar or Singapore dollar, what would be the a good amount? Well, it, it's really it depends I, on the stage. Which stage are you in? Mm -hmm. Yes, and plus right. that we are. We also want to see what we can bring onto the table. You see? So if you come mm -hmm. to us, like uh, we have a network of people who can help you go into market faster, mm -hmm. then you shouldn't be needing too much money. I think one of the story I always tell. Is this mm. other guy that we mentor? He's a, he mm. had he had this uh, idea of uh, quoting. He he wanted to create this quote that you can sell to your house. You can quote it. Mm. There'll be anti mo, anti dust, anti that. And then he came to us for money. 
after a while, I had a chat with him. I said, look, you don't need money. You need sales. Mm-hmm. And then I sat through with him. We discussed what kind, what kind of people he can approach with sales. And I eventually, he actually came out with the idea that he'll talk to architects. He'll talk to architects to talk to subcontractors. And you know what? Six months later, he came back. He, I got a call from him. I said, you know, Ivan, can I have coffee with you? I don't need money, but I need your time. What he has done within the six months is he has landed a B2B uh, in a uh, uh, job whereby he provides the entire coating for the entire building. Mm. Now he's asking me for more discussion to see what else can he expand his business and he no longer need money. Mm. So a lot of startup founders think they need money but actual fact, you may not need money. Uh, mm. Why are you giving away shares of your idea unnecessarily if yeah. you don't need it? Yeah. Right, right. So, yeah. So, so, so I think um, startup founders should actually look more in um, profitability rather than um, burning cash for results. You, you don't burn cash for results. You make sure that that is a business model that works there is why it's called a business. And um, get people working, you know, you, you if you are able to generate a good enough sales re- or revenue, uh, you don't need to sacrifice your shares. You know, shares could be worth millions and millions in, in the near future. And, and um, if you are able to get customers in, your shares would generally be worth more and it's the ownership of the share is still yours. Why? Why would you sell sell all your shares in exchange for for resources? So, how how people um see it is actually very important. Yes, a certain corporate when they reach a certain level, they require a lot of cash to burn. But what startup founders should understand a lot is not burning so much cash to make sure that it flies, but to have enough enough cash to make sure that the water is boiling. For example, you're not creating a a fire to make sure that. You know, you go all the way up, but to make sure that um, you all this leads to a certain business model or a certain group of customer acquisition where you know that if I spend a hundred thousand now, I burn this amount of money, I'm able mm. to lead to maybe a million customers that already has spent a dollar each, which means I am burning a mm. hundred thousand to earn a million dollar, for example. Right, right. Mm. Yeah, I think I get the point. Yeah. I, I get your point. For example, like some startup uh, uh, burn money just to advertise their business uh, at the early, very early stage, right? Which is uh, probably don't just for, I mean, as you know that it takes about 40 to 60 touch points just to convert a customer. So you burn so much money just to be on TV, for example, but you don't get any customers out of that, right? So uh, I, to build on that also, I, I have also a perspective where uh, a startup should also um, do business with people that are attracted to them. You know, sometimes the startup or a business in general wanted to target certain customers, but that customer segment don't want to do with this business with them. So, so why why waste money time to a market that don't want to do business with you yet? Yet uh, the word is yet. So so because of that, and there are some people who are already buying from you. Uh, you should focus there. Maybe not your target market, but. That what you should be looking at and expand from there, right? I think there's a good point. Uh, what uh, Ivan and Eric is saying, uh, some startup don't need money; they need sales. That's that's uh, wonderful. That's exactly what we need to look at. Okay, talking about uh, funding, right? I want to ask Eric. So, where else you look for funding? Uh, where else you look for investment? Your thoughts, Eric, growing further. Mm. I, I, I look for money to crunch base. I, I, like I mentioned earlier, I, I read a lot. So I, I go through a lot of investors that are VCs or, or private investors that are in the market and, and what they invest in, where they invest in, um, how much they invest so that we are able to understand which investor is suitable. Many people, like earlier we mentioned about um, money, money, everybody wants money. Actually, money is everywhere. It's how you raise that amount of money and use the amount of my money wisely. If 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 today um start a uh, startup were to raise a hundred million and they don't know how to spend that hundred million to make more money out of it, then what's the point of having that money in the bank? All right. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. uh, as a whole, I think we, we look for investors that not are not only um capital in uh capital intensive I would say or has a very good uh funding amount, but we also look for investors that are reputable, that has mm. network Number one that has um, the business knowledge that we want. We don't look for maybe like uh, a travel investor that invests heavily in travel platforms. When they come to us, they, are they going to convert into like a travel sharing platform? You know, people that already have the knowledge and and uh, the investors that 
know what they are investing in. So we, we don't want people that come in and say, okay, I invest in you, I give you the money, but I don't know what to do with you. Mm. I want your business, I love your idea, that's it. No, we don't want people like that. You see, um, Ivan and Sam, they, they always speak to us about how to move the business forward. What are the other possible business to be done? What are the network that is able to be put on the table? I mean, uh, I feel many people treat investors like God. They say, oh, wow, it's an investor. They give me millions of dollars, so and so forth. I have millions of dollars. It turns you into an overnight millionaire. But no, 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 mm. that's not the key. The key is every, it's called a deal, a funding deal, a, a fundraising round. The deal is a trading because you are trading your shares with the amount of money and that investors will be your partner. It's not only your capital partner, but also a partner that is able to bring you so many other resources that could help your business grow because they are skin in the game. Right. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Uh, Ivan, just want to ask you, Ivan. I mean, right. as an investor, right, in Nayang mm-hmm. Angels, uh, I know you shared this with me uh, the last time we talked. Yep. Uh, I want you to share again, what kind of quantum you're talking about from Nayang Angels in when it comes to investment in the startup? I think first we are individual investors. So number one is maybe just to be clear, is Nine Angels doesn't hold any fund. So when we have an idea, we go back to our uh, groups who are interested, angel investors who are interested. So normally we part no more than you know uh, maybe fifty to hundred thousand Hong Kong dollar each person uh, mm-hmm. for a deal. But we never normally we, in a full deal we won't go beyond five hundred thousand Hong Kong as well. Mm. Uh, we we won't normally we won't do that and uh, we and we don't take more than ten percent of the company. We only take eight mm. or even less or even less than that. Mm. Uh, maybe ten is the top we'll go. The, the max we'll go is ten percent. We don't do mm. anything more than that because we want the founder to still have the shares for him to grow and talk to the VCs after that. And one right. thing we agree, with Eric, is like if you can sell, then your valuation will automatically goes up. Yeah, that's that's very important as well for the for the for the startup. That's where we're looking at. Number two is uh, we also don't uh, we also want someone who are willing to be mentored. Not that we are telling them that we know everything, but mm-hmm. we want to let them know that look, uh, we want you to listen to our ideas because, for example, if you sell you create an app that sells to HR, we are people who are in the HR business. We probably know how HR buy your stuff, so we can tell a little bit more and you think about it before you approach HR. Mm. I think the last thing I want to mention is like like what you talk about every advertisements, right? What we want our startup to do is not to go for advertisement but to go for storytelling. So many mm. will say you spend all this money on the FB advertisement, but there's no emotional connection. But you as a startup founder, you have a story to tell. And we mm. want you to grow your following and we want you to tell your stories and then mm. from there grow the you know, grow the customers, not through an FB advertisement. So the mm. FBF you do must be something relevant to a story that you're telling. I think that's very critical for us as well. Like when you throw the challenge to Eric, can you have a story? He goes back and started his share a story called Sharing Friday and then got picked yeah. up by the government agencies and then you know that that's the kind of thing that we want to see from uh, you know from our startup founders. So um, look at angel investors as people who can invest in the stock market, who can mm. invest in bonds. But we choose to take the money to invest in you because we think that we like there's something that we can build together or we, we know a little bit more about the industry that you're trying to get into and how can we help you grow your business. And uh, right. that's, that's what I think Eric is very, very right to say that we are in this as a partners, not just capital partners, but we want to, you know, we want to do something together as well. Yeah. Mm, right. Thanks so much. Great. No, I yeah. think we are uh, reaching almost our cap time. All right. So. Final words, uh, I want to hear first from Eric, uh, yeah. from Sharon. Uh, can you share with us with your wisdom for the young startup founders out there, young graduates, young people out there? Um, maybe you can encourage them, inspire them a little bit. Eric, from you? The younger people, I think, hmm. first and foremost, the young people should always understand um, things don't, or, or resources, or, or your ideas, or whatever you want to do won't just appear or, or it can be done immediately. You need time to nurture. Number two, what is more valuable than money? Network and re- and other form of resources. And and mm-hmm. also the, the experience and wisdom that another partner or an investor could come in. For example, our other VCs or other angel investors that come in, they, they contributed their network, they contributed their, their support and, and growth of the company rather than just money. 
because money is just a resource. So many young people should not see money as money or, or, or think that, you know, I have a million dollars, I can make things happen immediately. No, things don't work this way. So young people should be patient, um, should also be determined. Uh, things don't work out now. It doesn't mean that it will work out later because um, things are because so what you do now may result to a better and greater result in the near future when the timing is right. For example, two years ago, I was speaking to Ivan about, uh, about economy downturn. I was saying, you know, mm. um, we estimate that the economy downturn could be coming uh, in the near future due to the, the um, cycle. I, Ivan, do you remember this? Yes, uh, yes. Ten cycle. So yep. the, the ten year cycle itself, uh, we, we look at it and we, we say, uh, yeah, we have to wait. So we waited in 2019 and wait, wait, wait. And, at 2020, it happened, and a lot of time is really um, the you need some time to wait for the result rather than just um, thinking it will happen now or hey, yeah it's it's gonna be too late yeah patience mm, all right patience uh, yeah I think that's great um, Ivan from you Ivan well I think this dare to imagine is our first collaboration with you and I angels and uh, in their DT leadership I think one of the reasons why we want to bring Eric to the conversation first as our first guest is really because you know Eric is a classic example of you know if you put your grade if you're willing to learn you're willing to go out there and really try out your, your best there's nothing that's impossible you say of course you are not I'm not asking you to you know go and make unnecessary risk taking but it can be done I mean like imagine what you want to do and then go for it i think the message is not right. only for the young people but also for those of us who's going to get retrenched soon uh, or, or mm. who are facing retrenchment now right. i mean if i look at those people who will be retrenched if you're in your 40s you're even better position than a, than, a, than a young fresh graduate because you have what eric has been talking so long you have the networks you know mm. the ins and out of the industry you have the networks to talk to i think that's more important mm. than you give it it, gives, it definitely gives you an advantage over the young uh, you know young startup for right. the young startup, what you have is your knowledge of the technology and how you can use the social media to your advantage. I think that's the key that you have. And I think both these group of people should be encouraged that it can be done. You have a solid idea that's based on your experience and you're out there to try to make a market impact instead of going for a market size mm -hmm. uh, you're, and you're telling the right stories. I don't see why it's not possible. So you know what, uh, trust yourself, believe yourself and imagine what you're going to do for it. Right. Uh, I want to ask a uh, special question for Ivan. I think uh, we talked about this before, but I want you to just uh, maybe share with the audience now. What inspire you, Ivan? Okay, for all you know out there, Ivan actually is a Malaysian. You know? <laughs> he actually <laughs> born in Taiping, I think. Batu Kura, right? No, Taiping Pera. Taiping, Taiping Pera, uh, near yeah. Batu Kura. I think that's, uh, that's where the, the durian place. Durian, durian. Uh, durian right? <laughs> yeah. So now Batu Kurau is having a lot of durian, no? it's heavy now. Uh, what inspire you, Ivan, uh, to go this path uh, of mentoring startups, uh, helping uh, this, uh, someone like Eric? I mean, is there any very personal reason for you to do this? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I, I, for, you, for those who may not know me, I, my first degree was actually in engineering from NTU Singapore. So I, the moment I finished my last paper, I even haven't get my degree yet. I mm. flew out to Hong Kong where my wife uh, was based then to look for a job. You know, that year was the year 2002. Mm. So and, uh, 2002 was a bad year. It's a, it's a recessionary year. Uh, and uh, Hong Kong was having, I think, 8% of unemployment. Their fresh graduates are not getting jobs. But you know what? I managed to get a job offer. And that's because uh, one day, I was looking at the internet and then I saw that the Singapore Chamber of Commerce of Hong Kong is having their monthly networking. So I went out there and my wife bought me a suit. With whatever savings they have, they bought me a suit and then I went out for the networking. So my first networking ever. And then my mentor then, he saw me and he said, you know, oh, what are you doing here? I said, oh, actually I am a fresh, I, uh, I'm an expecting graduate from NTU. I'm out here looking for a job in Hong Kong. And this gentleman, gentleman uh, Singaporean, Mr. Anthony Teo, who, who, who has since gone on to, you know, he was in the Secretary of NTU before as well when he went back to Singapore, but he's a very knowledgeable gentleman. He took me under his wing and he told me like, the first thing he told me, can you leave me your contact? So I actually, because of inexperience, I actually wrote my contact on a serviette, you know, the hotel serviette. And the next thing he told me, he said like, if you continue to give my, your contact like this, you never get a job. 
and he stopped there, you know. So mm. then he said, uh, okay, next week we are going to have a Singapore Association Hong Kong gathering. Or you come, I'll introduce to my friends. So I went home, I spoke to my wife, I said, he, he, le- he left me this comment, if you continue writing comment on Soviets, your contest on the Soviets, you won't get any job. So we're thinking, what can we do? So I went and print a name card with just my name, my expected degree, and my phone number and email. So mm. next week, I went for the Singapore Association. I started passing the income, and my mentor saw me, and he was impressed. He said, this is what I'm talking about. So mentors are like that. They tell you something is wrong, but they don't tell you how to go and fix it. You go and think how to fix it, because you can fix it within your own way, all right? Mm. It could be a different way. And then he was impressed so much, and then mm. uh, he started telling all his friends, oh, you should hire him, you should hire him, and then I landed a job. Uh, right. uh, in, in, the, in the factory in, in Trenton but I, of course due to plans and all that I turned it down because I need to go mm. back to Singapore to do my you know, my, my loan thing mm. and, but then that inspired me a lot it's like imagine if someone with nothing to gain is willing to you know do that for me mm. and uh, in, a, in a way I'm still in contact with him today until to mm. this very day still in contact right. with him and uh, right. still learning just by observing him I'm learning from him and right. Yeah, maybe a, a little bit more, more time. I'm going to share a little bit more. So while mm. I was networking, passing out this name card, mm. there were also, uh, so my mentor would say, oh, Ivan, it's time to leave. Uh, we, we finished the networking here. So, uh, oh, I said, I need to wait a bit more. So what I was doing was, I was waiting for everyone to leave, to go back and collect back my name cards on the, on the table. So there are also people who take my name card. He doesn't see a brand. He doesn't see a company. He mm. thinks you're nobody. He took your name card, he looked at it, and he just threw it on the on the lobby lounge table. But mm. for me, at that point of time, those are expensive stuff. Yeah. I, I, I need money to print those stuff. I waited for everyone to leave to collect back my name cards. Mm. So, until today, if you give me a piece of name card, I probably will keep your name card for the longest time. My wife is complaining, why are you keeping all these old name cards? But I just yeah. can't throw it. Away. <laughs> right, right, right. But, but my mentor has, you know, over the years he saw that, and, and, and because of that, I was inspired to actually at least, if I can, uh, bring my nannies for networking. So that's mm. what I do in home. I bring them for networking, help them break mm. the ice, introduce them to the people that I know. And then, okay, I say, I'm going to leave in one hour time. You can continue. But you, they already met some people, you see. So, mm. And I got them a conversation. So it's easy for them to network. And right. I think that's where, uh, if that's the personal story they're looking for, then that's the reason why I've been doing all this thing all these years. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, that's a very moving story, uh, Ivan. Uh, yeah. I mean, definitely that story made uh, you of who you are today. And I hope, uh, Eric, with this uh, story from Ivan, someday it will be your turn to mm. reciprocate the same, right? I think that let's keep, oh. yeah, you know, continue the goodwill and, and that's how we, we make the world a better place. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. We passed time. We passed yeah. 10 minutes. Uh, sorry, I take longer of your time. Thanks so much of your sharing and i wish sharon all the best uh, thank you yeah I, I hope you stay safe continue to stay safe practice social distancing and all the best for 2020 yep. and 2021 right with that okay guys thank you so much i'm going to yeah, thanks carol it's give a, you a pleasure pleasure all right you. see you again see you again thanks, all right bye bye likewise bye bye all right so that is Sharon and also Ivan Young. He is the angel investor that invested in Sharon two years ago and now the company is growing from C to C to B to B. And I like the person's story that uh, Ivan shared just now. Uh, he's a guy from Taiping and with this connection that he has and exposure, he gets someone to help him out without uh, his asking for it, right? And that, that made him of he is today He's now paid forward to Sharon, to others, and a few other startups under his belt. And according to him, he has about 878 eight startups that he's working on right now. So, uh, from Sharon, interesting, from Eric, now he has no degree, no diploma, but he wish someday, you know, he'll go into that, that path of education, the formal education, but that's not about, that's not really so important right now. What's important about Eric that we could learn is his grit, his tenacity, to grow the business, to approach someone like Ivan, very experienced, to help him funding and expand the business, which at the time he has already been making sales, right? So with that, thank you so much. Uh, I still going to have another session this Saturday. Uh, I keep the 
guest special so watch out on like our facebook follow our facebook page subscribe our youtube channel this is going to be uh, put in youtube as well uh, shortly so a guy uh, on saturday on topic on economics and management all right this is me cairo from malaysia helping people get back on their feet is good economics and as you could see sharon just now there to imagine they have proven that so help someone pay forward grow the business make yourself happy bye bye see you again